Guru Jnana Tumirandhasya Jnana Mujana Shalakaya Chakshur Militam Yuna Tasma Ishi Guru Venamaha Of the actual benefit of Bali Maharaj, he was his giving advice to Bali Maharaj was all personal. That became clear at this point. That his everything that he had said to Bali Maharaj up to that point was all personal motive. So Bali Maharaj very intelligently rejected him. That the advice you're giving is not for my ultimate benefit. So one who is on the path of actual elevation, he realize, he can understand everything in this world is temporary. Therefore, why should I give all my energy or even any of my energy to trying to improve a situation which is anyway doomed? Just like if you're driving very fast towards the edge of a cliff and you're busy adjusting the seat so you can be comfortable. Does it make any sense? Or what's your, you're driving straight towards a brick wall and you're looking at what, what music shall we listen to as we drive? Does it make any sense? That's what everyone is doing. We're all going to die soon. You're all going to die soon. You think, what kind of a sadhu is this? Comes to your house and curses you all to die. It's not my curse. It's not my curse. It's the curse that we've all taken upon ourselves by taking birth in this material world. We're all cursed. Even if we say, Ayushman Bhava, may you live a long life. How long? How long, how long can you expect to live? Who expects to live to be a hundred? No one. How many, how many people live to be a hundred? One in how many? In a million? Less than a million. More, I'm sorry, more than a million, isn't it? So, what is this? Ayushman. Everyone has some Ayu, but it's maybe 80 years, maybe 70 years, maybe 50 years, maybe 25 years. So we're not going to stay here long anyway. So, adjusting our seat as we're driving towards the edge of the cliff. Better is to find out how to live. Of course, this is only a material example because even if you don't drive off the edge of the cliff, we have to die one way or the other. But the point is, we're not meant to die. We're supposed to live forever. We're living in Devi Dham. And Devi Dham means that we always have to die and be born again. Punarapi jananam, punarapi maranam, punarapi janani, jaktare shayanam. Again and again, being born, again and again, dying, again and again, lying in the lap of a mother, thinking, ah, oh, no, very nice. You have to come out, if you're so lucky, in the modern age, kind, loving mother may go to an abortion clinic. It's very common. It's very common and very sinful. At least some people in America have some idea that this is sinful. But in India, it's just considered completely normal. Even though it's in Shastra, it's very clearly stated that it's a very it's very sinful. But somehow or other, people they have to say, oh, it's good for the country. Keep the population down. So coming out of the womb and then again struggling and again dying, rather one should go to that place, yadgatvananivartante tadhama paramam mama. In Bhagavad Gita also, Lord Krishna mentions param dhama, that place where having once gone, one never returns. That is the abode of Krishna. So an intelligent person endeavors to go to Krishna. Mostly all the more intelligent Indians are coming here. But the really one who's really intelligent doesn't endeavor for that which is temporary. Mm. That's also stated in Srimad Bhagavatam. 
What is that verse? That one should not endeavor for that one. What is that verse Narad Muni says? Tadu priyadaha talabhite dukha varanya tasukham What is that verse? How does that begin? I'm forgetting now. That anyway, Prabhupada translates it very beautifully as he does all his verses. That one who is actually intelligent and philosophically inclined should not endeavor for that which is temporary. Even by wandering throughout all the worlds, we're saying, what is this? Tala, Atala, Sutala, you know them all. Vasatala, Patala. Huh? We've all been there many times. Again and again. Where do you want to go? You want to go to Hawaii? We've been there. You want to go to heavenly planets? We've been there. So even by wandering up and down all these planets, we cannot find any actual happiness. One who is actually intelligent should endeavor to go to that place from which there is no return. Not only is there no return, but that is the supremely blissful abode. We want happiness. Is there happiness in America? What do you think? Everyone's happy? People are happy in America? What do you think? Everyone's very happy? Happy? Not only not happy, but very foolish. Very foolish. Very, and proud. Worse, even worse than being foolish is to be proud of your foolishness. <laughs> then, then you become an ass. An ass is stupid and proud of it. So they're proud. We build big buildings and we, we're the most powerful nation. But what is the use? They don't know even the ABC of spiritual knowledge. They don't know that we're only here for a short time. You may be an American in this life and uh, you know a, a dog in China in the next life. Dog in China means becomes dog soup. They eat dogs. Here in America, they they don't they, they become upset. Oh, they're killing so many cows, but they think dog is our best friend. What a foolish civilization. So actually it's a very foolish civilization. There's not even inquiry into the absolute truth. And they t- religion, they say, we believe in God died for our sins. God died? What, what religion is this? God died for three days. What is this? God died? How is that? And how is he God? That's what they say, right? That's the crux of the Christian so-called religion. We are sinful, and then God died for three days, so you just have to believe in Him, and He'll save you. And if you don't believe Him, then the all-merciful God will burn you in hell forever, with no hope of redemption. So this is, this is not theology. This is... It would be childish if it wasn't believed by so many people. So we request you to be actually intelligent. Aim for the Param Dharma. You like, you're coming here every Friday, people are coming. You like to sing bhajans, you like to chant Hare Krishna. Is it? Arati, all these things are very nice. Huh? So this is very... Sweet religion. We don't talk about bathing your body in the blood of anyone. You've heard that before? And religion means you should bathe in the blood of Jesus. What a, what a horrible idea. What do you want to do that for? But Krishna consciousness is very sweet. But you should understand this philosophy also. Otherwise it's very easy to be misled. We find in Hinduism so many Babas and Bapas and Ammas and Yogis, Bhogis. <laughs> and the main thing they're teaching you is how not to be a Rogi. The Yogis, they come and they're teaching how not to be a Rogi. You do pranayama and, and the people, oh, this is wonderful. 
People think, this is great, this is wonderful. Decrease your stress, do some meditation, say Om. This is all on the mundane platform. This will not take us to the Param Dharma. This is simply reinforcing our Dehatma Buddhi or identification of the body with the self. So you please be intelligent. Don't be foolish like me. I was so foolish I had to take birth in a foolish country. But you took birth in a place which is the place of Krishna. So he wants you to understand Bhagavad Gita. You took birth there to understand Bhagavad Gita. So you please study. You should know Bhagavad Gita. I mean, Christians were saying, I mean, I don't want to make a talk too much about it, but actually it's fourth-rate theology at best. But there are so many Christians, they can quote the Bible. I just arrived at Dallas Airport, what, two nights ago? And we're waiting for the baggage to come. One man waiting, opens his Bible, starts reading it. But the Hindus, they don't know. Who knows Bhagavad Gita? I'm asking. It's in Bhagavad Gita shows. You should learn. You have to teach your children also. Otherwise, Garv say kaho ham Hindu hai kyon? Why? Why should you say proud to be Hindu? Ham Hindu hai. They can ek bhi Bhagavad Gita shlok nahi janto. So what kind of a Hindu is it? What does it mean? It's in this way you're easily cheated. So many cheaters. Someone comes, shows a little magic. Oh, Bhagavan. They don't know what the word Bhagavan means. Or someone comes and shows some breathing exercise. They think, oh, very great sadhu. Cured my, uh, my st- what's that, stomach problem. Very good sadhu. It's not the job of a sadhu. Sadhu is to teach you how to cure your stomach problem, backache problem, headache problem, all problems, death problem. That's the main problem. You can be a great yogi. You're the greatest yogi in the world. Have you seen who's been to Kumbh Mela? Anyone been to Kumbh Mela? You've seen the yogis with Jota. It's so long ago. It's like a status symbol among them. They're all looking, oh, I got longer Jota than him. I'm a better, you, you know, you can, to grow it that long, they must be, you know, three, four, five hundred years old. So, but they're going to die someday. They have to leave their body. So, intelligence means to see the problem and how to overcome it. Just like you're a software engineer, is it? So you're given a task. And the task is you have to see the problem, what's required, how to overcome it, how to do it in the most efficient way. So all these things you study. Business. Business means you, there's a, certain things are required, but in everything, some things are required to be done. In everything you do in this world, there's problems. So you have to inquire, apply your intelligence and your know-how and your experience in how to solve the problem in the best possible way. So, this intelligence means how to, yeah, real intelligence means how to apply our thought processes to overcome the different problems and come to the desired goal. So the param dharma or the desired goal is to attain to the lotus feet of Krishna. And anything less than that is simply a waste of time. If we think that there's any desirable goal other than that, then however intelligent we may be, then we're simply wasting our lives. All these great Nobel Prize winners, big scientists, Pulitzer Prize winners, all Shakespeare, Karl Marx, Madonna, Cassius Clay... These are all old people. I don't know the new people. I'm fortunate enough not to keep up with all the latest nonsense. <laughs> so they're all wasting their lives. And anyone who thinks that these people have anything to offer, they're also wasting their lives. Because the only real duty we have, the only real solution 
we have is to worship the lotus feet of Krishna and enter his param dharma where there is sugi tanartane shabashaki gani tusi che jugalatane the gopis lalita and vishaka these are two gopis there are many more gopis and they're singing and dancing for the pleasure of Krishna in Golok Dham. In Golok Dham, Kataganam, Natyam Gamanam, Apivangshi Priyasaki, Chidanandam Jyoti Paramapitada Swadyam Picha. In there, in the Param Dham, Golok Dham, no one walks. So you may think, what do they do? They drive everywhere? They're Americans? There's no walking because everyone is dancing. When you're very happy, you don't see much people very happy. But if you're very happy, you you just feel like you don't you just feel like dancing automatically, isn't it? So in Golog Dham, everyone is dancing, and there's no talking. Just everyone is singing. The talking is so sweet; it's just like singing. Just like if you hear people chanting Sanskrit stotras or beautiful poetry, then even you can't understand the language. It sounds very beautiful. It sounds very beautiful, doesn't it? Even if we don't understand. So in the spiritual world, all the talking is singing. And all the time, you can, there's the sound of Krishna's flute enchanting everyone. Chidanandam Jyoti Param in the Param Dham Everything is illuminated by the spiritual luster of Krishna's body and one can always taste the nectar of Krishna consciousness. We ha- have faith. Have faith in the, You had enough faith in the, in the promise of America to come here. And now you've experienced that it's, a, it's comfortably miserable. That's all. What is the difference between India and America from the material standpoint? India is uncomfortably miserable and America is comfortably miserable. That's all. It's somewhat less noisy, less crowded. Most of the country is less hot. So it's more comfortable. And you can earn more money, but you have to get a lot of stress for the and you lose your culture, most of you, sorry to say. So why not strive for that place which is better than America? How much better than India is America, materially? Many times you may may say, maybe. But how many times better is the Param Dhamma, Golog Dhamma, than America. It's, it's not measurable. It's immeasurable. So aim for that place. We can go. It's very easy to go. It's very easy to go to Krishna. To go to hell, we have to make so many arrangements. This modern society, they've made big factories and highways and all kinds of machines, but to be Krishna conscious, all you have to do is sit down and chant Hare Krishna. It's actually much easier. So please make our goal of life Krishna, but if we're going to go to Krishna, we have to make some endeavor also. We have to study Bhagavad Gita as it is. Here we have Srimad Bhagavatam. Now, if you are to get your university degree, you have to read so many books, isn't it? You have to, especially if you're a lawyer or a doctor, so many books. So why not read Prabhupada's books? And you can get a university degree from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Prabhupada writes about that. Have you read that? In Chaitanya Charitamrita, Prabhupada said, we should try to get a PhD from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So this PhD doesn't mean how to become a a scholar who knows so many things but doesn't even know who he is or what the purpose of life is or who Krishna is. But a real PhD or really advanced 
person means who knows Krishna. What is the goal of life? One time Prabhupada was walking in Vrindavan early morning and one Kisan came up. Uneducated. In those days in the villages they didn't send the children to school. Now they're sending them to school. And you know what? They won't stay in the village. Because the education makes them think that the village life is useless. So what's going to happen is all the children will go to the city and it'll be, it'll be, then they'll, they'll make all the uh, farms will be taken over by the big corporations like in America. And all of India will move to the town. You can see the urbanization of going, is going on. Anyway, I was making the point, there's one illiterate, poor, means not wealthy. Farmer came, he saw Prabhupada walking, came up and ran up and bowed down at his feet. Prabhupada said, just see, he's more advanced than anyone in your America. He's not educated materially, but he knows there is Bhagavan and here is a sadhu, I should bow down to him. He knows there is birth and death. He knows that whatever situation I'm in now, that's because of some previous activities that's put me here, but let me bow down to the lotus feet of the sadhu and get the blessing of Bhagavan. So he is more advanced. He's a bigger scholar than any PhD whose head is filled up with all kinds of rubbish that can't help him in the slightest if he doesn't know that I am the servant of Krishna. So, we're not against education per se, but if we don't know that we are the servant of Krishna, then our whole life is spoiled. Prabhupada often used to tell that story, the boatman and the scholar. You know all know that story? The boatman and the scholar. You all know that? That in Bengal, of course there's bridges everywhere now, otherwise so many rivers, because the Ganga, Ganga Delta is there, so so many rivers and to cross them, if you're traveling, you have to take a boat. So there's so many boatmen. Maji. Boatman is there. So one big scholar had come and he was doing some research in the rural area of Bengal. So he had to he came to a river, had to big river, had to cross it. The boatman was there. So they were crossing the big river, they were crossing, the boatman said to the scholar sorry, the scholar said to the boatman, he saw the some fish he said, Oh, that's a very rare fish. Do you know the Latin name of that fish? He said, Latin, what's that? You mean you've never studied pisology? You don't know the science that you're living all these fish here, you don't know. No, never studied it. There's fish and I'm a vegetarian, so I don't eat them like most people in Bengal. So I don't know much. So then they're going along and they see some birds flying. Say, oh, you see that bird? Very rare bird. Do you know the Latin name of that bird? Latin? What's that? You said that word. I never heard that word before. You mean you've never studied ornithology? Oh, you've wasted... You didn't study pisology, you wasted 25%. Now you've wasted 50% of your life. Then there's clouds, it's monsoon season, clouds are gathering. You say, oh, scholar says to Bhagavan, that's a very rare cloud formation. Do you know the name of that? He said, no. Oh, you don't know meteorology? You've wasted 75% of your life. He said, yeah, but I tell you one thing, those clouds mean there's going to be a big storm. And we're in the middle of the river, and I don't think we're going to make it across. So there's a big storm and the boat is going down. The boatman swimming and the scholar, bloop, bloop, bloop. The boatman said to the scholar, do you know how to swim? No, you've wasted 100% of your life. One thing is, the boatman, as they row across the river, they always used to sing. That was this. People used to, while they Everyone used to do. The, the, when they're working in the fields with the bulls, they used to sing. 
and when when they're working the chakka, Mahatma Gandhi's Bhagawan, he said, "Mera Bhagawan yehi chakka hai." Mahatma, kai say Mahatma? Mahatma nas tu mang parta. So everyone used to sing, and what would they sing? They'd sing about Krishna. So even one is not very highly educated materially. Swakarmanatam abhyarcha siddhim vinditi manavaha. By doing one's work in Krishna consciousness, one can achieve the perfection of life. One doesn't need to be highly educated. People would do their work in the day and at night, they would hear Ramayan, Mahabharat, Srimad Bhagavad. In this way they would become highly spiritually advanced. Unfortunately, people are diverted in the modern age by TV, watching TV, wasting their time, so many stupid programs, listening to horrible music. This is called music in, in the modern age. It's just... Uh, it's music from hell, actually. It, and you see the people, they're, they're jumping around. And go, they, they, they just look like complete rakshasas. And the noise they make is like... And they call it music. But music should actually elevate our consciousness. It's, when you hear it, you should feel inspired, isn't it? Maybe, you know, maybe you don't know. You don't, if you're brought up on rock music, that's all you know. But actually, you see all these... All the... Ragas and Raginis, they're all servants of Krishna. They're all persons. Everything's a, all the rivers, Yamuna, Ganga, they're all devis. So the Ragas and Raginis, they're all persons and they're all servants of Krishna. But this so-called modern music, there's no rag and it's, it's just horrible. And people call it music. So it's this whole way of life, it just completely spoils the whole existence of the human being and it's Jaganya Guna Vritti Sta Adhoga Chanti Tamasa. It's all dragging us down, 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 down. So don't go down, go up, chant Hare Krishna, read Prabhupada's books, then you can go up to Krishna. Otherwise, what's the use? We enjoying so called enjoying material life completely waste of time trying to because doomed from the beginning we cannot enjoy. We may have physical comfort, but we see like in America there's so much physical comfort, but everyone is disturbed in the mind, isn't it? Everyone is everyone is you know what this is? It's it's described in Bhagavad Gita, Chintam Aparimayamcha means the demons, they're all... This is the description of the Asuras. Chintam aparim, unlimited chinta, unlimited worry, tenau, tension, stress. These are all symptoms of a very wrong society. So you're very lucky that you have the inclination to come to Krishna but please take it very seriously. Don't think that Krishna is someone to be prayed to for material benefit. Krishna, we should approach him as the Acharyas have taught us on the path of Sharanagati. We have to take shelter of Krishna. There is no shelter in this material world, but the supreme shelter, the Param Dhamma, is Krishna and his supreme abode. So let us endeavor to go there by taking to Krishna consciousness in all seriousness. If we read Prabhupada's books, we'll find it's not like other religious books. But Prabhupada is giving us the knowledge and the, the inspiration and the urging to properly use this human form of life, which is very short. Uh, it's very short 
but it's very valuable. Labdva sudur lavamidang bahu sambhavante manusham artada manitya mapiha dhira turnam yatetana patedana mritya yavan nisraya saya vishaya kalu sarvata syat. Lord Krishna says in Srimad Bhagavatam that we have attained this human form of life which is very rare. Having attained it, we should not waste it. We should properly utilize it for getting free from birth and death. We won't be here long. We have to die soon. So utilize the time properly. And if you say, well, but I want to enjoy myself. But we have already enjoyed in Tala, Atala, Sutala, all the... We've already enjoyed. How many types of enjoyment have we had? At least 84 lakhs. What's it like to be a beetle, a frog, a bird, a snake? We've done it all before. So don't attempt material enjoyment. Ayo hariti vai pum sam udya nastan chayanaso tasyarte yat chano nita utama shloka vartaya. Every rising and setting of the sun is just just like in the calendar. You pull off one day, one day, one day. Every day you pull off one one day of your life is gone. Gone, gone, gone. The sun is coming. You say, Oh what a beautiful what a beautiful sunrise. That means another day is coming that we're wasting. And sunset means another day we have wasted. Unless we utilize the time for glorifying Krishna. Otherwise it's just tick, 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 tick. And then one day it's going to go tick, tick, bam! Smashed. But if we chant Hare Krishna, then death will, death comes to everyone, right? Even if you chant Hare Krishna, death will come, isn't it? But if we chant Hare Krishna in all seriousness, then death will come and bow down. And the devotee will tread on his head and go up to Krishna. Otherwise, he will put his foot on our head and push us down into hell. So please take this chanting of Hare Krishna very seriously. Study Prabhupada's books and take advantage of the great opportunity you have. Bharata Bhumite Hoilo Manusha Janmaja Janma Sharta Kali Koro Para Upaka Having attained human birth in the land of Bharat, one should make one's life successful by the culture of Krishna consciousness. And do good for others also. Prabhupada said, I have come to America not to beg anything, not to get anything, but to give something. So you should give. Just like Ved Narayan, he came here for material advancement, got Prabhupada's books, and now he's going out and distributing them. So you can do also. He goes out in Dhoti and Tilak and says, I'm, I'm from India, and these are books of the highest Indian spiritual philosophy, and people are taking. Going I'm out around the Americans, so you can do, you please do. That will be, the, that will make your coming to America worthwhile. Otherwise, it's just wasting our life here instead of there. That's all. If we're not Krishna conscious, we're simply spoiling our life. In America, there's chance to spoil it worse. So it's a dangerous situation. Better be Krishna conscious. Hare Krishna. Is there any question, please? Oh, I said I'd speak a little bit in Hindi. Ap sab angrezi samaste lekin abhi adhyatmik manaranjan ka samay hai ki ek shvetang bhakta bhas bharat ki rashtra bhasha mein bhagavad gita pracha kehte hain. To ap sab Angrezi Sikhliya hai. Bhotik Vikas ke liye. Aur Srila Prabhupada ki kripa se. Mein Hindi balta hoon jis se. O Bharat ki Rashtra Bhasha mein. Prachar.
भगवद गीता प्रचार हो सकती तो जो भी भाषा बोलते हैं भगवान का स्मरण करना चाहिए और इस कल युग में भगवान का स्मरण की उत्तम विधि है हरि नाम के द्वारा हर नाम हर नाम हर नाम एव केवल कलो नास्व 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 गतिरण्य था इस हरे कृष्ण महामंत्र कीर्तन उत्तम और एक ही उपाय है इस कल युग में परम गति परम धाम प्राप्त करने के लिए कोई दूसरा उपाय नहीं है कलो नास्व 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 नहीं 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 अर्थात काम के द्वारा नहीं ज्ञान के द्वारा नहीं योग के द्वारा नहीं कोई भी दूसरा उपाय से नहीं एक ही उपाय है कल युग में परम धाम प्राप्त करने के लिए कृष्ण नाम तो कृष्ण नाम हरे कृष्ण महामंत्र आप सब जाप और कीर्तन कीजिए और शिल प्रोपात की दिव्य ग्रंथों भी अध्ययन कीजिए तो इस श्रावण कीर्तन पदाति के द्वारा आपका दुर्लभ मानव जन्म सफल होगा हरे कृष्ण there's any question please ask not being not being not being realistic in this world uh uh-huh. and who after there and all that yeah that should not be for the glass not should not be plastic yeah well not but for bhagwan we should give everything the best we don't want to make him into a beggar we are begging for the mercy of bhagwan we should bring all the money in the world all the gold and all the kanak and all the kamini are meant for bhagwan sake not that i shall drink out of a gold glass and bhagwan you drink out of a plastic glass we can take money you you have money give me i'll take however much you want to give i'll take it but i won't use for me i'll use for krishna's service so that's that's another kind of sadhu they can t- they can take money but then they shouldn't use it for opulent life main thing in the service of krishna is bhav in archan bhav but then if you have money then you should offer nice things to krishna that krishna i love you so much and but uh, i'll have all the nice things for me and then all the nasty things for you anyway plastic it's not very high class we should offer when uh, gold but that's You see, they were saying India is a poor country, but there was usually, even now, people have gold, and previously there was so much gold. But in the West, you don't see people wearing gold. Hardly, they have a little ring, huh? So these things there, that we're saying kanak. So if one is, in, if one is uh, bewildered by these things. or attracted by these things then one spiritual intelligence is spoiled but we can use this for offering to krishna you can you gold plate silver plate at least everyone can afford so you can make any why not have a nice silver plate that's normal isn't it in puja silver plate why plastic anyway i don't want to make a big issue out of it but if we're going to if, if we're going to do from bhagwan then we should do it properly huh? 
If you get sick, you you spend you don't think twice. If you have heart problems, something you don't think twice about spending twenty thousand dollars. But then, uh, for offering to Bhagawan, we should at least you know make things nice. That's the point. Plastic is low class. Anything else? All right. Well, Hare Krishna, thank you.